In business tonight, there is a need for greater private sector involvement in the development of trade policy. It's coming from Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Maxine McLean. She believes the private sector should be proactive in policy formation as their performance is affected by these policies. That the private sector must recognize the importance of these exercises and use their initiative to be represented. Um, it is something that is critical to the success of the sector or the various elements of the sector. Senator McLean was speaking during the opening of a workshop for CARICOM trade officials on the trade in service agreement and the negative list approach to services and investment liberalization. Sharing the concern was Director General of the Office of Trade Negotiations at the CARICOM Secretariat, Ambassador Gail Mutherin. She says the private sector's participation is key. We also want to encourage the member states to, to continue to involve their private sector representatives in similar capacity building activities at the national level, as this would go a long way in revitalizing and expanding the regional consultative mechanism, which is an essential part of trade policy formulation. The European Commission's recent multi-billion dollar ruling against tech giant Apple in Ireland could potentially result in some good news for jurisdictions like Barbados, at least in terms of global tax competitiveness. Economist Jeremy Stevens has been looking at the potential upside of the hefty tax decision. Ireland's loss could be Barbados' gain, and the reason Apple uses Ireland was as a tax-efficient vehicle for them to market worldwide or to sell their products worldwide. Ireland hardly charges any taxes, if any at all. And um, I'm thinking that our international business community here could recognize the whole nationalism movement in Europe or the EU stamping its sovereignty onto its sovereign states or its sovereign members as an opportunity to probably gain access to a lot of these large international business companies that could not only provide Barbados with reams and reams and reams of foreign exchange because imagine you've got billions of dollars sitting in cash and the majority of it passes through in some form of fashion in Ireland. And now a lot of how some of the major stocks traded today in the region. In Jamaica, Cable & Wireless Jamaica Limited was the volume leader, followed by Supreme Ventures Limited and the Jamaica Stock Exchange. In Trinidad, Trinidad Cement Limited was the volume leader, followed by Guardian Holdings Limited and National Flour Mills Limited. And in Barbados, the Insurance Corporation of Barbados Limited was the volume leader, followed by Banks Holdings Limited and Massey Holdings Limited.